Uh, welcome to Ebenezer Baptist Church. It's uh, good to have you with us today. And I, I want you to remember that uh, we start back our services next Sunday. That will be June the 7th. If uh, it's a pretty day, weather permitting, we'll have it uh, in the, under the pavilion or, or out in the parking lot, whichever is more convenient. And uh, if not, though, uh, there will be plenty of room here in the auditorium for us uh, to meet and still have social distancing. So uh, remember that. That will be next week. It's been a, it's been a while since we've uh, uh, been together to worship but, uh, uh, as a church, but uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I've been, uh, missed everybody, and it will be a blessing to see folks again. Um, I want us to uh, remember in prayer, uh, Betty and her daughter, remember Hannah in their prayer, so that God would be with them. And uh, let's just go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Uh, Father, we thank you today for your blessings, your love and mercy towards us. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to worship. Even though uh, things are different now, I'm thankful, Lord, that we can still worship God. Uh, someone has said where two or three are gathered together, our scripture says uh, that you'd be in their midst. And Lord, I'm thankful that you're present when there's just one. And I just pray, God, today that you just bless uh, uh, this message. Use it for your honor and glory. Bless those that's sick. Be with them. And I pray, God, for, uh, uh, for your blessings today. And we'll thank you for that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. I want us to look in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 uh, today. And uh, the subject of this is the man of sin. And I'll read verses, and it's in verses 1 through 12. I'll just read all of it. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition, who opposes and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showed himself that he is God. Remember you not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, and that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. As I said before, this is the uh, uh, concerning the man of sin or the Antichrist that's to come. Now, remember uh, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, the Apostle Paul described the second coming of Christ, how it'd be. Uh, I believe it's 13 or 14 through 18 that said that the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead of Christ shall rise first. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them that meet the Lord in the air. So he tells of Christ's uh, Christ, uh, coming there. But now there had been a word or a letter, as we'll look at in just a minute, that had been circulating there in Second Thessalonians, uh, in this book, Second Thessalonians, that people thought that uh, that they were living in the day of Christ. They were living in the day of, days of Christ, that the rapture had already took place. And, of course, uh, that would be uh, scary, too, if they had been left behind, wouldn't it? 
and they uh, thought that uh, they were living in the, in the day of Christ. Now he tells them, he tells them of Christ's return, and first, but now he says, are gathering together unto him. Now the gathering together unto him, of course, is the rapture of the church. And he tells them not to be shaken in mind, first of all. Uh, the, of course, uh, I told you this story had circled around there. And he told them not to, be, uh, not to worry uh, about this. But there was a, there's a good cure for, uh, for your mind if you're worried about things. And that's the Word of God. If you get in the Word of God, you stew the Word of God, it'd be the cure for this. But the second thing he says is in spirit. Now, I take this that some in that, in that day uh, considered themselves probably super Christians and they uh, depend on special revelation other than study of the Word of God. And probably this is what took place here, that there was some there that was uh, preaching that or telling that and spreading this around. And of course, the, the Word uh, of this, he says, had not come from God. Don't be worried in mind, spirit or word, because this had not come from Paul. So evidently, people were saying that the Apostle Paul had sent this letter that told them they were living in the day of Christ. Now, uh, the letter circulated, supposedly it came from Paul. Now, the day of Christ. Now, the day of Christ begins after the rapture. And that will be the tribulation period. And the day of Christ will begin with judgment. Uh, in Joel chapter 2, he talked about the judgment that will come. And the day of Christ uh, begins with that, but it extends through the millennial period. So uh, the day of Christ is going to be a long time, but, uh, but uh, we will be with Christ already because the rapture is taking place. Now, notice uh, the falling away they speak about is, I believe, in two parts. One is the departure from the faith. And uh, we can already see that happening today. In the day that we live, many have departed from the faith. And even in John's day, he said that many have departed from the faith. He said in one place that they started with us, but they went out from us, so they were not of us. So John had seen this take place already and of course today we see that has happened and, and still happened in the day. A departure from the faith. But it's also a, de a departure of the true church too. The church will be taken out at, during this time or before the tribulation takes place. And then it says, then the man of sin will be revealed. Also his name in here is the Son of perdition. Uh, you notice there's two people in the scriptures that's called the son of perdition. One is the Antichrist and the other is Judas. And the only two people in the Bible that's called the son of perdition. But here it's, not, it's speaking of the Antichrist. And when he comes, he's going to exalt himself. And... Uh, and he's going to exalt himself above all that is called God. So uh, the Antichrist is going, to, uh, is going to show himself greater than God himself. And are on the, are that which is worship. And it says he will sit in the temple of God. Now this is what Paul is saying here. The Antichrist is going to sit in the temple of God and he's going to declare himself to be God. Uh, you know, uh, Satan, he wants to be worshipped. He, uh, uh, he wants people to worship him and surrender to him and, and worship him. And, and in the tribulation period, he's going to claim himself to be God. And Paul told him, said, I taught you these things while I was with you, while I was present with you, don't you remember, I taught you all these things. Now, there's something today that's withholding the man of sin in verse 6. Uh, John, uh, uh, Paul says here that the mystery of iniquity does already work. You know, Satan is always pushing his agenda. 
anywhere he can get a foot in, Satan will try his best to get it in. You crack the door and, uh, you, uh, and he'll get his foot in. You give him a mile, he took 10 miles. And he's always pushing his agenda. And he's always working against mankind and against God. You know, uh, uh, he can't get to God, so he works against uh, man. People he can get to. People he can deceive. People he can destroy. And, and of course, uh, Satan, if he could get to you, he would destroy your life. He would like to destroy your life. Uh, remember, uh, I mentioned in one of the little weekly messages the other day that Job was actually under satanic attack. God uh, gave him permission. And of course, uh, I don't think you can uh, deny that he was under a satanic attack. attack. And, and of course, uh, 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 the devil can't be but one place at one time, but he's got a lot of little minions that's around and they, tr and they trouble, uh, trouble you and they will trouble you wherever you're at. Now, it says, only he that let if will let. And that let if here means hinder. Now, there's a hinderer. There's a reason that the Antichrist has not made his appearance today. There's something that's hindering him, that's keeping him from just making his appearance. And if you look around, things are getting worse and worse around us today. I don't know. We could be getting close to the time when Christ comes today. We could be in coast. Of course, God could send a revival. All this could change and things could go on. But God, but, uh, God uh, it looks like uh, that Satan is running wild in the day that we're living in. Now, in verse, it tells us that the Holy Spirit will hinder sin no longer. It's the Holy Spirit of God. It's God Himself that hinders Him from making His appearance. And he will not let him make his appearing until it's time. And then when it's time for him to make his appearing, the Holy Spirit will no longer hinder sin and sin will run rampant on the earth. Evil man will wax worse and worse on the earth. And the second thing is the true church is removed from the earth. So uh, the true church or the church of Christ will be gone. Why? Why? Because the rapture will take place and will be removed and there will not be anything to hinder uh, the men that want to do evil in that day. Now it says, then shall that be wicked be revealed. But uh, we know that uh, his time is not going to be long, isn't it? He's got seven years when he makes his appearance. After seven years, He's going to be put in the bottomless pit. And, but it says, Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. You know, uh, uh, in uh, Revelation 19, that is what this is talking about. We see the return of Jesus Christ. And of course, Antichrist will be gathered at uh, at uh, Jerusalem against the uh, uh, Jewish people could completely destroy them. You know, don't it, think, don't it seem strange to you that throughout ages the Jewish people has always been persecuted? Always been persecuted. Uh, there was a time uh, in the uh, uh, Medes and the Persian Empire that, they that someone tried to exterminate the Jews. Of course, we know today about Hitler. He tried to exterminate the Jews. Over in the Middle East today, that's their desire is to do away with the Jewish nation. Now, why is that? Why is that? It's because uh, they're God's people. Uh, right now, they're in unbelief. But they're not always going to be un in unbelief. Uh, according to Romans 9, 10, I believe it's 9 and 10 and 11, they're not going to always be in unbelief. They're going to, at the return of Christ, uh, they'll be saved. Now, who, it says, whom the Lord will consume with the spirit of his mouth. And, it should see, and also today, not only them, but the Christian church is being persecuted. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it started in America, but across the world, it's been starting. And of course, uh, uh, a lot of folks in America would like to do away with the Christian church. 
Now, he says he will consume with the spirit of his mouth. Uh, he, uh, when the Antichrist and his armies, when he comes back, all Christ has to do is speak. And that army will be destroyed. The Antichrist taken. Now, he will destroy it with the brightness of his coming, it says. And the return, this is the return of Christ after the tribulation period is finished. Revelation 19, we see the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords returning to set up his kingdom. Now, notice it continues to say that his coming is after the working of Satan. The Antichrist is going to have somebody with him. And just like God is a trinity, this is a trinity too. There's Satan, there's the Antichrist, and the false prophet. And so, uh, the, so uh, there will be a power behind the Antichrist, and that power will be Satan himself. And it says, with all power, of course, satanic power, and signs and lying wonders. Now, the Antichrist is going to give signs. You know, the Jewish nation, Christ says, always look for a sign. And here, this, the Antichrist is going to give them just what they want. He's going to give them signs. And these signs are supposed to show that he is who he, cla he, who he claims is God, uh, which we know is not true. It says, and signs, and not only signs, but lying wonders. Lying wonders. You know, uh, I imagine that he will speak evil, and I know he'll say uh, great things that's against God. But he's, he's coming is after the working of Satan. And deceivableness, it says, of unrighteousness. What does Satan specialize in? He specializes in deceiving people. And we can see his work today in deceiving people across the world today. But the, he's really going to deceive the people in this day in the tribulation, it says, of unrighteousness in them that perish. Because they receive not the love of the truth. You know, um, the gospel has been preached everywhere today. Um, many places, it's probably all over the world or has been all over the world. Uh, but today, people are not being saved like they were in the past. And people are, of course, uh, rejecting. They, uh, many people are, well, we've seen uh, the uh, people going to churches and shoot folks that's, uh, that's worshiping there. And we see all kinds of things today against the church. And it's amazing the things they say against the church when they're doing this about cursing, cursing God. And you see people today that actually hate God and hate the truth, but they receive not the love of the truth that they should be saved, he said. And of course, the Jewish people as a whole, uh, and of course, the punishment of the tribulation is going to be mainly on them, but it's going to affect the whole world. It's mainly against the Jew, but it will affect the whole world. And that they should be saved. God will send them a strong delusion. You know, uh, some people today believe things to me that are just amazing that they would believe things. There are some things you're taught to me and uh, I know some people believe them, and it's always amazing to me because there's something usually real outlandish. But uh, they have been sent a strong delusion, or they have themselves took this delusion, and it says they will believe the lies of Satan. Now notice these next words. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth. Now, that is strong language there, isn't it? People in that day will be deceived. And we're talking about the tribulation period. They will be deceived and they will believe Satan because they want to believe Satan. They'll be deceived. 
Uh, they believed not the truth. And the second thing was, is they had pleasure in unrighteousness. Believe not the truth that they all might be damned. You know, uh, one, of the first thing, one of the first things I heard on hell when I got saved was that there's, there's a heaven to gain and there's a hell to shun. And that's still true in the day that we're living in. And the only way, of course, you can shun hell is through the Lord Jesus Christ coming to Him, redemption that we have in Him. But here's the message to Christians. To us today, study the Word. Show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. Study the Word. Know what God's plan is. If we know what God's plan is and God has chosen to show us His plan, I mean, He don't tell us everything about it, but uh, there's some things we can understand yourself. But to study the Word. Study to show yourself approved. Know God's plan. We know God's plan. We won't have to panic, will we? Don't worry about the Antichrist. And today... There's movies made about it. And I know people are worried about the Antichrist, but don't worry about the Antichrist. He will not be revealed until we're gone. The church is gone. And it's pointless to try to figure out who he is because uh, it might be just anybody that Satan raises up, but it's pointless to try to figure it out because we don't know because here it tells us that he will not be revealed until the church is gone. But no, uh, I, I like this, what I've, I used to hear from a preacher. I can't remember who it is. But know that you know that you know you're saved. Know that you know that you know you're saved. You know, are you ready to meet Christ at his coming today? That's the next thing on God's agenda. He's coming back for the church. I don't know of anything else the Bible talks about that can happen before the Lord Jesus comes back. So we're just uh, standing or waiting today, waiting on the return of the Lord because He could come back at any time. Let me ask you today, if you're not saved, do you know that you know that you know you're saved? Or do you know you're saved? You know, uh, we have a no-so salvation. We can know that we've been saved. Why? Because of the promises of God. Because of the Holy Spirit of God that seals every believer. We can know that we're saved. And be sure that you do. If not, ask God to forgive you. Come into your life and save you today. It's a simple thing. In the Old Testament it said it'd be so simple even a child would know. So today... Are you ready to meet Christ? Because Christ is coming soon. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, for your promises. It's in the word of God. And if there's one in the sound of our voice that don't know you, I pray that you'd speak to their hearts today and save them by your grace. Any that's, anybody that's saved and they're walking far away from you, I pray, God, today that you'd speak to their heart and may they come back to Christ. And we'll thank you, God, for all you do. In Jesus' name, amen.